So now it looks like he's no longer standing on on a bunch of graham crackers, but now it looks like he's standing on like a, a, a big pile of mud and some rocks. So that's progress because we didn't want it to look like graham crackers. So the mud is, is a good sign because we're going to kind of build up and make it look less like mud and look more like dirt. And then after the dirt phase comes the bushes and the grass. And after that comes the snow phase. <laughs> and that's all something that we can test out right here. I'm like a cooking show. I, I've made these tiny little things as a test off to the side. So how about we kind of test out what I intend to do for the big model here on the tiny little models. It hasn't fully dried just yet, but I think it's good enough to work on for now. Vanilla, the last one was Earwig and the Witch. It seems like people did not like it very much, but it's different, excuse me, different, refreshing and interesting. Oh yeah, so no, I, I haven't seen that one. That's cool. I'll, I'm always down to check out check out a new Ghibli film. I, I can't imagine it being like, yeah, I could see people not liking certain movies, but I can't imagine that they're ever completely Morbius bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't imagine that they'll ever be full on morbid time. So, so yeah, I'll check it out if I can. Earwig and the Witch. Oh, was that like computer graphics? Because I, I thought that I had seen that they were going to try and get into like doing more computer graphics or something like that. Uh, okay, so here's some colors that we need to bring out the, the detail. And I need some of this, I think. Hopefully this isn't dry. So here's an example of using, like this is like the, the nice stuff that I use for my models. And it's rather pricey, right? And this is an example of something that's from like the dollar store and it's mad cheap, right? But it's kind of close enough and we're just going to be using this as a test for bases. So we might as well use the cheap stuff, right? If it's even usable, I, it, I opened up this just now and it looks like it's dried out. Let's see. Uh, yes, the one in 3D, okay. Interesting. Okay, so I've got some of this out. Let's get this as a kind of paint tray. Like even Howl's Moving Castle, it's it's a good movie, but it's not like my favorite Ghibli movie. But even then, it's still like r enjoyable, very very enjoyable, and it has a lot of memorable characters and moments. I, I don't know if I like it like the most. I just I just think it's really good. It's kind of tough to rank them when they're all so good. It's made by the son of Hayao Miyazaki, so it's sort of the new gen of Ghibli movies. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah, I think the son has directed a couple of movies at this point, but I I don't think I've watched any of them. Mm, he did, what was it, Earthsea? Like The Legend of Earthsea or something like that? But I haven't seen that myself. I haven't seen any of them, so I don't know. I'd be interested in, in watching them. Like, do you think, do you think that the son has his own voice? Or does he basically just make Ghibli movies like, like, like very, very um, in keeping with the style of his father's movies? Or does he have his own particular style? That would be interesting to find out. I, meanwhile, I've, I've been hearing a lot about uh, another director, not from Ghibli, um, the one who did Your Name. He's directed a, a couple of movies at this point. And I haven't seen... So right now I'm dry brushing, by the way, guys. I'm just sort of lightly brushing on top of the brown and picking out the details of the sand, but I'm not like doing a complete coverage of this this lighter tone. We're just sort of 
picking out the top details, but yeah, I was saying earlier about about your name. I I've heard a lot of good things about that movie, and and I've even heard people describe the this director as being like the next the next Hayao Miyazaki, right? But I haven't seen them, so if anyone has watched those movies, if you have a opinion on them, I'd like to know. What are your thoughts? Vanilla, it's pretty similar to his dad's style, but I think his son is more flexible. Flexible, interesting. Interesting, interesting. I mean, of course he is. He did a movie in CG. Right, right, right. And and and, and the father is has not really done a, a complete movie in CG, as, as far as I recall. His movies have elements of computer graphics in them, but they're usually sort of in service to the to the overall 2D animated style, but never, never fully taking over. That's what it seems like to me, at least. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at our progress so far. So yeah, I've enhanced, pick out the details. So yeah, you can see that it's not just solid brown now. Some of the little details are coming out once I've used this, used this uh, antique gold color. It's kind of like a ochre kind of color. It's coming out. Can we get a really t enhanced view? There you go. But we can go further. We can push this a little more and kind of bring out the details a little more with a, a lighter, lighter tone. But we don't need to go too far. Right? We don't need to go too far into this. We still want to maintain some of that brownish color overall. And this does get covered up anyways. A lot of this detail is going to get obscured by other layers of sand and grass and bushes and all of this stuff. So, so it's not that necessary. Uh, Vanilla, I did like your name. It's really wonderful and sad. Oh, no, a sad movie. Oh, no. If it's a sad movie, I have to, like, get into the mood to watch it because... Uh, I don't know. I, I, uh, I'm i not always in the mood to see a sad movie. And it kind of bums me out when a sad movie... When a movie that looks fun... <laughs> when a movie that looks like it's fun and uplifting turns out to be sad I'm like damn I wasn't in the mood for a sad movie crap but so I'm kind of glad you told me that now so I can mentally prepare myself again this is dry brushing vanilla those ground samples are looking nice and detailed thank you thank you it's coming along it's just a you know just a very easy process of, of dry brushing it to, to get the sand to come out, right? The little details of the sand. The I can tell that it's a little still wet, like the glue layer underneath, which is not ideal. You kind of don't want that. But I'm, I'm a little... Mm, I'm rushing it a little bit because I just want to see how this is going to look and this is a test after all so on the proper model I can kind of take a bit more time okay 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 getting somewhere getting somewhere yeah and and I know that there's like more movies from the same director uh, of your name i know that there was a few other ones but i have not seen them I'm kind of behind on my anime movies i'd like to i'd like to get caught up on what's good as far as anime goes i'm i'm pretty good about staying on top of that but as far as movies go no I'm kind of behind I've watched um, the Demon Slayer movie. That was pretty cool. That was like, uh, I don't know, like last year or something. Demon Train or something like that. <laughs> Mugen Train. That was pretty neat. 
they look like Oreo cookies that fell off the floor and are really dirty now. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Everything that I've done thus far for these models has reminded me or someone in the chat of food. <laughs> From the graham crackers of the of the giant's base to now uh, Oreo cookies. I'll take it, I'll take it. I mean, there are worse things out there that you could remind people of. Could look like poo poo. That's not cool. I'm glad it looks like food. <laughs> At least. And again, this is more dry brushing, and it's just a lighter, lighter tone now, as you can see right here. Got a bit of that bleached bone, and we're kind of picking out the details one more time. And we're kind of spurt. We're not like evenly evenly spreading out the this color we're kind of just dotting it sporadically around because you know we, we want it to look like the real a uh, real dirt real oreo cookie dirt um which is not uniformly covered and and that's something that i i often talk about here is is how like when we think about the ground when we think about about the sky and trees in your mind you might think about like a tree be being brown right but it's like like in reality when you look at a tree when you look at the ground and dirt there's all sorts of colors right there's all sorts of colors in the in the ground and the dirt what i'm saying is i look at dirt a lot i look at the dirt and i look at ground a lot <laughs> and that's what i try and do is try and get those realistic hues and tones into my models and I think what I want to do is add some green so let's add a bit of green do I have a do I have like a, a crappy paint green like so that I don't have oh I do there you go oh I just realized I've been streaming for about three hours eh, that's cool let's keep on going guys it's 501 here in Ontario let's keep on going and we'll see where we end up Usually, uh, this is when this is the time when I melt. I melt and I turn into a puddle. Because uh, three hours is like I was talking earlier about how when I first started streaming, I could go for about two hours and then I would be so exhausted from talking and playing games. But now, you know, three hours. I can do three hours. There we go. Let's take a look at our cookie, our latest cookie, and I want to get some green. And again, I just I just want to kind of get a little green, but not a lot, right? It's a little bit of green. Lello, I'm back. Three hours hydrate. Oh yeah, let's do a consume beverage. Oh baby, here we are. By the way, everyone, today's beverage is peace tea, raspberry, razzleberry flamboyant <laughs> but I've poured this into a cup right here so let's let's ooh. ah very nice I appreciate the hydrate I probably would have forgot so thank you <laughs> for that hello turtle my internet went out it's storming here uh oh is that vanilla are you cozy at least a uh, lello I think you've mentioned this before, but but it sounds like uh, where you're at, you have a lot of a lot of storms and blackouts. I think you were mentioning that previously. Uh, how often do you get those those blackouts? Because yeah, we've we've had a few here uh, lately within the last month or so, and it sucks. I hate it. I hate when that happens. Uh, it sort of makes me realize how. <laughs> how dependent I am on like having the internet and stuff and just power and electricity in general because without that I'm just so I feel like like a blob <laughs> and and I the last time it happened we were out for about 17 hours we were out for about 17 hours and I ended up reading a book which is good 
it's good to read books but yeah normally I mean I like to say that I read books but normally I, I kind of don't get around to it because I'm always so distracted by computers or whatever or doing this and that so in that sense it was good okay Lello, oh yeah, my internet is already bad to begin with, and then it goes out every time it storms. Wow, holy, man, that's rough. But I'm glad, uh, I'm glad you're okay and you're here. So this is the progress thus far on the base. And again, this is kind of like, this is kind of like uh, the plan for this, for the big model here. It's all just a, a test. Lello, we have also have a lot of blackouts too. It's really bad. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, I don't know. You, you don't have to say anything about where you're from or where you're at, but I'm kind of interested, like, what region you're at or, or what country you're from because that sounds pretty bad if it happens so frequently. But, I mean... I guess in some respects you've kind of gotten used to it. <laughs> okay, now I need to make a bit of gray for the rocks and stone, so let's do that. And again, we're just using very cheap paint to do this. You don't need to use the good stuff. And where is my white? I need some white paint. Here we are. Hello, I'm in the US. Everything is just old here and we get really bad storms. Damn. That yeah, that's rough. Do you have a backup generator? Uh cuz that sounds like it would be helpful if it happens that often. Ashwin we're eating tons of skewers from 10 miles. Nice. The famous 10 miles. Ashwin here uh, has some of our, is a regular in the chat and he has some of IRL friends of mine. Uh, he is an IRL friend too. And they are, they are chowing down. Cool, cool. From 10 miles. So now I'm painting the rock and I think I need a bit of this brown from the from the ground. I rhymed to kind of blend in together. Well, the blackouts are usually in older places. My building is 200 years old. Holy crap, that's old. <laughs> uh, when it's that old, is it kind of uncomfortable to live in a place that's that old like does it need that much maintenance or is it kind of like cool to live in like such an old place and the architecture is really neat and it's a really cool looking building 200 holy smokes I feel like if it's that old you could like punch the wall and it would just like collapse <laughs> or something <laughs> We ended up in a monsoon type storm recently. It was so bad that power lines and stuff were down. Wow. Yeah, over here, we had a fairly significant storm. And I think I talked about this before, but uh, yeah, I was out for several hours and I thought that was pretty bad. However, some other places in Ontario, uh, Canada, that is, they were out for a week and possibly two weeks and some people just straight up died like yeah there was some people that died because uh for one reason or another i was like holy crap that's that is hands down the worst storm that i've ever experienced uh and i thought that the ice storm from 2014 2013 was pretty bad uh, that one we were out for like 72 hours 
and it was in, in winter. <laughs> and I remember our, uh, my whole family, we were all just like huddled up in, in one room, like using our own body warmth to warm ourselves up. Well, we had a fire too. We had a fire going, but that was pretty bad at the time. And I'm sure people died then too, but when I heard that people were dying just recently from that thing, I was like, shit. Uh, Lelo, it's not cool looking. They updated it so it doesn't look that old at all, but it functions like it's old. <laughs> it's like a, it's like Cher. It's like a Madonna or some kind of celebrity that it's got some work done to look, look younger than they really are. <laughs> And you don't have central air? Oh, okay, okay. Actually, do what? does my building have central air? Oh, we kind of do? I don't know. The light, the, the lightning was also really bad. It caused a fire? Oh. When Australia got like the fire, they were like, they were having forest fires and that seemed really bad. Well, I guess there's forest fires every year, every summer in, in California and stuff. But yeah, it's, it always seems really, really bad when that when something like that happens. Uh, Lelo, we had a really bad winter uh, here too. My power was out for two days and it was below freezing inside. I wish I had a generator. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I guess you didn't have like a... So wait, how did you stay warm then? Because... Because back when we were hit with an ice storm, we stayed warm with like a fire. We had a fireplace, but like, how'd you do it in an apartment building? So now I'm taking the rocks and I'm just sort of bringing out the details of the rocks. Yeah, Australia has really bad wildfires. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was bad. I think that was like two years ago or something, and. They had to save the animals because the animals were getting burnt, like dying in the forest. And I, they had to call in these ships to like take the take all the animals or something. It was it was a lot, but I'm glad that they saved some animals. And the the Irwins, you know, do you remember Steve Irwin? <laughs> like his family is still involved in with with zoos and stuff and yeah they were like they were helping to save the animals i thought that was really cool lelo i wore a ton of clothes and you were under a pile of blankets i guess that'll do i mean that sounds under under nice normal conditions that actually sounds really really nice like to just nice and comfy <laughs> But it sounds like, I mean, obviously those conditions that you were in were not nice, normal conditions. It was an extraordinary situation. But that's the strat. That's the strat that you got to do. Lelo, I got my cats a special bed that kept them warm because it reflected their own body heat. Oh, did you use, was it like a kind of metal foil metallic kind of thing because uh yeah that we use something like that when when the ice storm hit us to uh to maintain our warmth and and yeah like reflect the heat our body heat it was something along those lines Lelo his kids seem so sweet like him yeah his uh his son is a dead ringer for well I guess that's inappropriate to use but yeah his son looks like like Steve Irwin it's it's kind of wild it's like wait are you sure this is his son or or is this some kind of a cloning project cuz he looks like him like it is wild and his daughter Bindi is uh is very sweet as you were saying she's she's so soft spoken that i kind of want like a, i want her to like read a book or something a book on tape and then i'll buy it she could read the dictionary and she was on Dancing with the Stars uh, a couple years back. Yes, I watched Dancing with the Stars. Uh, she was on that a couple years back, and I think she won. Bindi Irwin. Shout out to Bindi. 
is an awesome name. But yeah, it's wild how, how much uh, the sun looks like Steve. And I was watching this episode because there's they actually have a TV show called like Crikey, it's the Irwins. They have some show like that where, yeah, it's literally them just working at the zoo and stuff. And there was this part, there was this episode where mm, the son, whose name escapes me now, he was working on some kind of uh, snake exhibit thing, right? And it was like potentially deadly snakes. And his, and the the main snake guy in charge, uh, I'm sure that's the technical term, main snake guy. The main snake guy was like, like I worked with with the, uh, with Steve. I worked with Steve. I don't know how to do an Australian accent. Uh, working with the snakes, and now I'm working with his son. But I'm really scared uh, about working with these <laughs> with these snakes because you know they could they're potentially poisonous or they could kill you or something, right? And he's like, you know, basically in so many words, he was like, I really don't want. Steve Irwin's son to die uh, by my hands while we're handling these snakes, you know? And I was like, I'm sure everything's going to be fine while I'm watching the show, but I was like so freaking nervous for this kid. But like, he's not a kid, he's like an adult. I was so freaking nervous while watching this. I'm like, oh my god! Careful! <laughs> but yeah, that, that show's pretty cool. And yeah, the, the Irwins seem like really, really great people. Okay. Okay. Now I think it's time to do a bit more of this green. Maybe mix a bit of green with this gray. Again, we're just trying to get like some natural kind of... Natural kind of colors going on. Mixed into here. And we'll kind of speckle this onto the rocks. I, I painted these rocks more or less gray and I keep on saying how you know real rocks are, are colorful they have a, a lot of colors they're not just gray and yet I just painted gray rocks so that's why I'm dabbling some green onto them right now and in the hopes of making some more something a little more interesting Just dabbling on some of that. Okay, let's take a look now. So we're getting close to to some of the, the more exciting parts. So I think that looks pretty nice, right? Like this looks like something. I don't know what in particular, but <laughs> it looks natural. Uh, I would argue that it looks like some kind of ground. Lelo, that looks so good. Thank you, thank you. I think that the rocks could kind of get some variation. Like, they, they're all kind of uniformly uniformly gray rocks. So I think what I might do is add maybe a little a little bit of ochre to, to some of these rocks to pick out the detail. Let's, let's do that. It kind of helps to... Uh, so this is something that I've noticed about streaming, is that when I'm painting a model, and I'm looking at it with my own two eyes right now. You kind of see the model uh, in a certain way, but when I want to look at it again after I'm after working on it, I will look at it on my second screen, right? I'll look at it on my second screen and I can see it in a different way and I can kind of look at it and kind of critique it, <laughs> so to speak, uh, and address any issues that might come up. So that's kind of an interesting thing that I've noticed that about painting models online that I I would never have picked up on had I never st streamed online, <laughs> is what I want to say. But yeah, I'm glad that uh, you think it looks realistic. We're going to do more. It's not, it's not over yet. We're going to really push this, and we're going to kind of try. We're going to try and do some things to this model. So we'll see. We'll see. Well, you know, we're going to keep on working on this as much as I can and then we'll uh, we'll wrap things up. But yeah, let's let's keep going since I'm feeling it. 
And this time I'm picking out some of these rocks with like a, a more ochre yellow, but it, this time I'm just kind of using a glaze, a very light, a very light yellow watery wash of paint. And we're picking out some of these rocks specifically so that they're not all just gray rocks. And even the smaller pebbles, we can do that. We can mark out some of these smaller pebbles like that. And that'll help. That's, that's one of those things that I kind of realized about painting models too. And basing after, after my long hiatus, I was listening to a podcast about from a, like a championship winning painter as someone that's, that's won a number of trophies in painting competitions. And he was saying like, yeah, like it's not just painting the model itself. You really need to really get in there with the base and make the base look really, really good. Cause that, that all counts too. Like that all helps really sell the model. And it even comes down to like painting the individual rocks of sand on the sand and stuff. Like, like that's how, that's how you win. <laughs> and I'm not trying to get out here and win a tournament, a, a, a painting competition or anything, but it sort of opened up my eyes and I was like, wow. So really that's the amount of detail that I should be not should be, but that's the amount of detail that you could do. And I thought, let me try. Let me at least try to really get in there and pick out these details. And once I did try, I was like, oh, cool. This is actually kind of fun. Like, you know, like making the base look really nice and doing as much as you can on the base. I think it's kind of fun. Okay, so here's the last thing I'm gonna do in terms of the base part. Uh, this, this phase at least, we're just gonna pick out even more details with a very, very light bone color here. I'm just gonna pick out some of these rocks and this is a very light color. So I don't think it's a good idea to pick out the bigger rocks of sand with it. You just want to pick out some of the smaller rocks because if you pick out the bigger details, it's going to be kind of like a little too weird looking, but just the little rocks and you want to just do a couple of them around. And if you do that, it just helps create some variation, you know, from where we were originally to, to at this point now. It looks a little more uh, realistic. We're just kind of adding layers and layers of realism. And I think actually that's one of those things, again, that, that really help is when you're painting or drawing or doing these miniatures is thinking about, about the layers, right? You're not trying to make everything look super realistic all at once. You kind of want to just build up on that. You keep on building it a little bit at a time. And I think we can get away with adding some of this on the very edges of the rock. Maybe, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see how that looks. This is one of those weirdly obsessive things too. <laughs> I'm thinking like mm, maybe not everyone would ever want to do this, but for me, I feel like it helps. It just looks a little better in my opinion. So here we are, everyone. This is, this is where we are at right now. Lello, uh, I like this idea. It looks really cool with the specks of color. Yeah, so again, this is a matter of, of, of really kind of building it up just a little bit more detail every single time. We're adding more and more layers of, of realism, I guess, I don't know. 
right from where we were originally and again this is all going to be sort of practice for our big boy here see this is it's all the same basically right but that's what's that's kind of like going to be the end product for our big lad something along these lines focus here you go 